Okay, great. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, three great talks there with different contrasting uh, views. I think none, maybe not contrasting views. Um, okay, so we're going to have a question and answer uh, session now. The probably the best way of doing this is in the chats. If you put down a question in the chat, we can also uh, handle uh, ask people asking questions um, uh, via audio. So in order to do that, you have to raise your hand. So if you don't know where the raise the hand feature is, if you're new to Zoom, there's down at the bottom, it says manage participants. Currently says 50, we've got 50 people. That's fantastic. Uh, if you click that, you should get something that opens up uh, and depending how this is set up, it'll open up and you should be able to see something that's opened up down the side and it might be in the middle, might be down the bottom, which basically says raise your hand. Um, having said that, I won't necessarily be able to see if you raise your hand. Um, so um, I'm hoping people are starting to stick questions in the in the chat. Um, doesn't doesn't seem to be don't seem to be many questions there. But um, if we start doing that, I, th um, I think if you go back to I think it was about three fourteen was or three fifteen. Ben said feel free feel free to put questions in. There's a few questions from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but um, yeah, I, I was hoping there would be plenty more than that because some of them have already been answered by the. Uh, by, by the alert uh, speakers. Yeah. So um, w one question that was asked, so I'll, I'll ask this while, while I'm waiting for people to put things in, it's about the technical aspects. Um, so um, we, we look at Mathagon, for example, and say, wow, that's fantastic. I'd never be able to do that. So um, would people be able to do this? Or failing that, who would you suggest they speak to, to go and get it done? So um, to build something like this yourself or, or any kind of interactive website, I feel like there's a huge hurdle at the beginning. You need to buy a domain name. You need to get a server that, that runs the website. You need to set up sort of some basic HTML and, and JavaScript to run code and so on. And that takes a lot of time and experience. But then once you've got a website like Mathigon running, adding one more interactive element takes an afternoon or, or even just half an hour or something uh, to sort of combine different things. Um, I know that many of the interactive elements um, I've shared can be done at least in sort of um, approximate ways in on platforms like GeoGebra or Desmos. Um, for example, I know that uh, Ben has a, a great GeoGebra version of the um, sunflower seeds and you can change the angle and see the distribution. So many uh, relatively complex things like that can be done without writing too much code. I know that GeoGebra does require some kind of code occasionally to do more complex things. Right, yeah, so I, I perhaps should have said earlier, there was a couple of things I forgot to say, um, what, what was about GeoGebra. So um, Ben would be able to answer any questions on GeoGebra. We actually do have somebody else who can answer questions today. We, we, we've, we've got Fran from Enrich, um, who can answer questions about Enrich. They do quite a lot of stuff. Um, that's, that's interactive with maths. Um, so um, please stick questions in the uh, in the chat. S Sam has um, s s <laughs> a lot of experience with the, the RI with some of its live videos, um, but then I noticed she was on the phone there. <laughs> right, so. Um, Sorry. <laughs> pl pl please um, uh, put your questions in, in the chat. Okay, so um, uh, I was wondering if it's just, get Christian's response to that, to that last question. Who should we turn to if we, if we want to do this ourselves? Because it is quite hard, isn't it? I, I, I was just typing a message in the chat. <laughs> um, um, well, first of all, um, Philip said about um, the, the hurdle of getting a domain name and a server to run your stuff on. Um, something I've been using lately a lot um, is glitch.com, um, which is uh, a really good interface for uh, um, you go to it, you can you click start coding and it gives you an area where you can write some code and then it immediately makes it available on the web. Um, so my, um, my, my Bloomberg thing, that was a, a glitch um, project. Um, and the other good thing about that is everything on glitch, you can then look at the source code off. So you could take my things and uh, see how it's done or remix it. Um, so that's a really good way of getting into it. Um, and they have, they have, loads of features about you can ask for help with a particular bit of code a really great way of getting into coding 
Um, as for who to <laughs> ask to do these things, uh, is that a, a subtle hint that I should say that I'm available for commission? Uh, <laughs> um, when I'm not working, because I notice one of my colleagues is watching, um, outside my normal working week, I can very occasionally do these things for people. I'm, I've done some for James Grime. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a couple for Katie. Um, so, yes. Um, but it's have a go yourself. Um, Georgia, as we mentioned a lot, Desmos, as we mentioned a lot. Um, and I, I saw Fran was asking about how we got these, uh, how you get into coding. The answer for me is sadly that my dad owned an IT company and I started using a computer when I was three. Um, so I don't think I can give much advice for it, someone wanting to get into it as an adult. Right. Get a time machine, go back to, yeah. And I think also if, if anyone's kind of based within a large institution like a university or a big organisation, um, it may be that there are resources you can tap into there because obviously they'll have a website. Um, it may be that there are people you can talk to in whatever relevant department, presumably IT, but who knows, uh, that could, you know, arrange for a page on a website that you can then use in workshops or point people to. Um, they may even be excited by the idea of having go at coding something fun and interactive, if there's anyone with those skills kind of within the organisation. I'm sure these people must exist. I don't know whether uh, it's easy or difficult to access them, but it's something possibly worth thinking about if you're sat there going, oh, I really wish I had a thing that could do this, just, you know, just so that I can click it and make it do that and show this concept. Um, you know, that that's the kind of thing um you know you shouldn't be held back by the fact that you wouldn't know how to do that yourselves either you know find someone uh, if you're in the mood for it you know teach yourself a bit of coding but or, or use something like GeoGebra or Desmos um and you can embed that in a web page as well I'm sure you know people can help you to sort out a, an embedded GeoGebra file or something like that right okay so I'm, I'm going to turn to the to the chat again um there is a question from Tony Mann which says this perhaps isn't what the meeting with this meeting is about, but having just moved to online university teaching at very short notice, I'm finding it very difficult to get any reactions from students. Any suggestions for inter interactivity with which students will engage in an online lecture, especially if they're watching at the same time? Um, I, I should say I'm actually working on a project to deal with this. So I would advise anybody who's in a university to keep an eye on my Twitter feed and then maybe over the weekend and on Monday, something will be announced. So. Um, so there is that, but I mean, I don't know if if um, uh, if, if somebody would, would like to field a similar sort of question. How how do you get students to in, interact, um, Michaela? I mean, they, you probably have most experience of perhaps trying to get students who or, or people who don't want to interact, maybe to interact. Yeah, I'm trying to think of. Um, I know there's an app which a lot of teachers use, and I can't remember what it's called, but it will come to me in a minute. But um, it's sort of it's an app you probably have heard of it someone might have where you can they get it on their phone and you can ask questions students can kind of vote or it's kind of a quiz is a this quiz a kahoot app. i think um, we, kahoot yeah kahoot so a lot of things like that we, we find teachers use and we've used with our different resources we've given teachers before we'll do quizzes and and things like that um yeah, right. something that they can have a say in, I think, is, is a big thing. Right, so I, I can't remember, it's Kahoot, yeah. So I better, should put this in the... Uh... Yeah, it is Kahoot, I'm not sure how you spell it. With a K, K-A-H-W-T. Uh, I think actually a, a, a general comment on that, though, is if people are reluctant to ask questions, interact quickly, which is natural. Mm. It's like the awkward silence when you ask for questions in a live lecture. But uh, a polling, an interactive polling thing like Kahoot or quite often software has something built in, does get a ball rolling. It's harder though if they're watching at different times. So Tony was asking about if they're not uh, watching at the same time, then then I don't know. Polling doesn't work because it's not. Um, sorry, Ben. Uh, one of the things that we were thinking of, so we were thinking about putting some of our workshops online and, and doing videos and, and in the video leaving places where you say, you know, pause, work on this problem, come back to it, things like that. And accompanying that with a live chat where people could ask questions and things. But we also anticipated that people wouldn't necessarily ask questions or be watching it all at the same time and they'd be doing it at different paces and they might be splitting it up, all sorts of things. So having here's here's a way to contact me if you have any questions so an email and things like that which i'm guessing your students already will have but also here are some times where i will be doing a live chat and you can come on it's like having having your office hours here is a set period where there will be the people that 
that know about this stuff available to answer your questions and things like that and and maybe can go through some of the questions that they've had in email and and stuff and just providing as many options as possible for people to get in touch with you with questions um in terms of people not not wanting to engage and not bothering to engage if i can put it that way it's a i mean it's a difficult one you you can't force them can you and i don't know what the answer to that is yeah i think it's been especially difficult recently just because of how everything is weird and awful um you know there's a lot of things that the students are going through that we're all going through as well that uh, are probably impacting on their ability to concentrate and or focus on things uh, i think going forward things are going to you know become a bit more settled in and this kind of thing might end up being a bit more routine um, and i suspect yeah engagement is, is one of the things that we're largely worried about having spent a few weeks where there were literally some students that no one had heard from at all like not responding to any emails and we had a spreadsheet where we kept ticking people off like oh they're not dead good uh, tick um, so it's you know from that to like making sure that people are actually engaging with the content and yeah we did exactly that for, for some of the last few lectures of term we had to make a video version and we literally Really just went well this is the point where in the lecture normally we would say work on this problem pause the video now go away and work on this maybe chat to each other you know find some other people who are working on this and talk to them because that's another thing that you miss when you don't have an in-person lecture it's not just your interaction with the students but it's the chance for them to discuss things amongst themselves um, and I think some of the video chat things have things like breakout rooms where you can do that kind of thing but it is going to always be awkward and stilted and not real and kind of difficult to, to engage with for everyone so giving I think giving people different ways to do that giving them options like you know do they you know be on a video call with each other while they're watching the video or do they chat in a text thing or whatever um like try you know trying different things I think um, and you know giving them not just questions to go away and answer but ways to see whether what they've done is correct um so things like you know feedback and assessment or even just interactive stuff that you can recommend they go and have a poke you know have a play with this thing, drag these graphs around, see what you can do kind of thing. One yeah. of the things that would be really good for stuff like that is ways to engage with what you're doing that involve varying types of engagement. So for those of us with a good enough internet connection, with no usage cap on our broadband, things like that, videos, live chats, they're, they're great. We can be there, we can interact, we can have questions. For people that don't have those luxuries who might have a, a cap on the, the amount of internet they're allowed to use or a really poor connection or a family of five all trying to use the same device to do schoolwork, work, uni work, all of those things. It can be really difficult to, to engage with that stuff and if you can provide as many different options to receive the information and to reply back as you can that makes it a lot easier for a lot of people to engage and I th think especially your students who need um, different ways of being able to engage with you will understand if you are trying to provide those options if you are trying to provide that extra support to say look I know you're not all all in a circumstance where you have your own quiet space and you can sit down at whatever time I've decided my talk is to to participate at that point um, is always a good thing to think about right okay yeah, yeah um, so add, I think can I just we'll... add something on <laughs> Is it quick? Because we're, we're coming up to... to oh, sorry, yes. Um, I just wanted to... We'll I will talk about the assessment for one second. Um, the reason we introduced the assessment at Newcastle was to get students to engage. Um, it was something they could do on their own, off their own bat, um, and didn't require any in human feedback. Um, so that's something students can do. Just, and we can tell that they're, they're still engaging with the course because they're doing something, but they're not directly contacting a human. Okay, right. Thanks. So yeah, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, wrap up now for like the main session. And so it'll give people a, a good chance, a good opportunity to, to leave. We will be hanging around. So there's sort of like an, an after hours lock in uh, during the lockdown. Um, if you want, there's plenty of good stuff in the chat. So save the chat for yourself. You will get it, get it later. Um, Worth mentioning before um before anyone does leave that GeoGebra has been mentioned quite a lot in this after hour bit I will do a very short demo on how to put a GeoGebra file online if you want to stick for that you're welcome <laughs> yeah you won't be able to stop him it's true no, you won't no I'm, I'm gonna do it it's gonna be a good one. Um, I've already seen some some of some of the stuff so okay um, so yeah so um, thanks very much for coming and um, I, I think I've got I've said everything I need to say um, there is a document that you can add to I've put the the link in the um, in the chat so 
uh, of just any before you go um we'll talk about what's what's coming up for the next three sessions so we originally said we'd do six of these um that's what we've planned so far if you are finding them particularly useful and really want us to carry on do let us know and um, no promises but we will we will have a have a chat and see what we can do um, next week we are talking about online events so for example things like science festivals conferences and talks they can't happen in person at the moment but a lot of places are moving them online so we've invited some various people to talk about what they're doing for that and, and how that's working and things like that particularly thinking about the maths content for those given all the discussions we've had today about interactivity um, week after next so the 28th of may we'll be thinking about learning new skills so um, we've invited some some people to talk about how best to to learn different skills that you're learning I can't remember if one of those is programming, um, but we've definitely got uh, Fran coming to Fran Scott, who's one of my colleagues at the RI, to talk about making videos and some other people that talk about that. And then on the 4th of June, we are looking at particularly maths communication in universities and large organisations um, and how that has been disrupted and um, what challenges we're facing and, and how we can still still get on with that. So hopefully see you in the coming weeks as well so th this is your chance if you do need to go at four o'clock feel free to disappear now no one will judge this is this is the uh, the the short 30 second break for you to stretch your legs and or uh disappear off if you need to but thank you very much for everyone for coming because uh, 50 is a great number of people isn't it that's it's kind of impressive yeah thank you michaela uh, really good to have you thank you Bye. yes we give every a, a clap from the uh, yep. verification.